Well, Simon. Hello. Um, thank you for doing this Mass Olympics show well, thank here you for at the me. school. Yeah. Um, it was sort of a ride with the kids. I think they loved it. Mm. Um, for those who, you know, people who haven't experienced or, or heard of Mass Olympics, mm. do you mind giving us, like, in one sentence, what is it? Why do you do it? What's, what's it all about? Uh, well, it's maths comedy, <laughs> uh, which is great because it's a term that, you know, uh, intrigues and perplexes. Well, maths comedy is not really, uh, I mean, people say to me, I was, I'm equal uh, parts uh, confused and yeah. terrified. Yeah, no, there's, no, there's a Venn diagram where it's like confused and terrified and then the crossover is like maths. Yeah. So confused, confused and terrified and then in the middle it's like how I feel about maths and that's how most people feel, unfortunately, because they've had such bad experience. So you described the show so, maths comedy, So, but why do you do that? Well, I mean, I'm, well, part, well, the whole motivation for the show was ironically is not because I wanted to come into schools <laughs> so this has like been an amazing thing that's happened out of it but it was all because I got to uni wanting to be a, a physics uh, be a physicist mm -hmm. so you and enrolled in bachelor of science yeah I did a bachelor of science yeah yeah so I was I was a good kid I was like a I was I was always good at science and maths mm. and I was always really interested in um, science and maths so mm. I was like really interested in Einstein's theory of relativity like mm. I was obsessed like my nickname was Albie. They called me Albie, short for Albert Einstein. <laughs> you had crazy and, uh, hair too, to kind of match. No, no, not back then. I oh, was right. a, okay. I was a nerd, like combed down. Yeah, like, yeah. We won't get into that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. I'm still a nerd. I'm a transcendent nerd. I <laughs> but yeah, but it was, it, I was really, really interested in it. And I think even though there were, there might have. I mean, I was really high up in the in the in the in the class. Mm. And I, but there were some smarter guys, and there's always smarter people. But it's my enthusiasm. Like, I don't think anyone had a level of enthusiasm that I had. <laughs> and, uh, and it's great because that really makes the difference. And so, um, so when I got to uni, I, I um, you know, this was my dream to become a physicist. Mm. Um, and I was really shocked because when I got there, the people, well, the people who were teaching me, like, they weren't social. Like, it was all very insular, and they went to their rooms. So you mean, like, the lecturers and the professors? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, was all, yeah. They, were just, they were just not talky, sociable people. Mm. And, I, and I just distinctly remember thinking, like, oh, I don't want to be like that. Well, for someone like you, that must have been a massive sort yeah, of... Yeah, it was, it was, it was a know, massive disconnect. Between, yeah, 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 yeah. And then what I discovered was just kind of just being... You know, uni is... A, one of the best things about uni is the fact that you're just there with great people. Mm. So that's the, that's the thing for me, is like universities are a gathering of people and whatever makes it work, be it, you know, fees or whatever or whatever, you know, it's just the gathering of these awesome people in your early 20s and everyone's like mm. vibrant and, and so the people I ended up making friends with were the art students because, you know, <laughs> they had enough time off. Yeah, you know, it's true. like two that's contact true. hours. But I, I but just love... the whole love, character and personality and what you were into. Yeah, and just like yeah. the communication. Like, you know, it's, it, I don't, I'm speaking about this in retrospect now, but... You know, it was, I was learning about communication, like sitting down and talking and having a conversation and being funny and witty and, uh, you know, like being imaginative. Mm. I, I would, you know, I think part of me was thinking I'm wasting time, but now it's not. I actually think it's vitally important because um, that was something I lacked and I really wanted. And, and I also had this other part of me which I was really interested in. And what happened was the people I was hanging out with hated it. <laughs> so you, had, you were trying to reconcile these yeah, two exactly, yeah. sides of yourself. Yeah, okay. I was trying to reconcile two sides of myself, but also I think I was, I was just trying to... I, I, I was kind of... I couldn't understand how these people who were very intelligent just hated maths. Mm. It was just like, don't talk to me about maths. Mm. I mean, you know who I'm talking about. Mm. There's so many people like that. And we're not talking about just, you know... Um, uh, this is like, you know, we're talking about like PhDs and all these sort of people that go on to do great things. They have no relationship with mathematics whatsoever. And they've just consigned themselves to the fact that they're an art humanities person. It's and like, it's my not brain even, doesn't work Not even way. on the table. It's not even on the table, yeah. no. And that really shocked me because, you know, it got to the point where um, my girlfriend at the time, she was a visual artist, she, you know, she drew and stuff. And she was kind of interested in maths as well, but it's, it's just so many people just hated it. Hmm. And, and whenever I try to bring up stuff, they would just like not even give me a go. Like they just start making jokes. Mm. Um, and so, um, and this is you know this is before the time of QI. I think a lot of things have happened mm. since then that have changed. But you know back in the 90s, definitely back then it was like nerd as a 
derogatory term. Mm. No, there was nothing like cool about it. It had no, the, it, the whole it had hipster no type thing where it's like, oh, that's its own, yeah. you know, people can respect that, it's own yeah. thing, that hadn't happened No, yet. no, no, because yeah. Google hadn't kicked in yet. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so, so anyway, so I, I took it upon myself, because I was interested in, in performing, mm. and, uh, and, I, and I'd sort of dabbled a bit, but I kind of thought, you know, well, part of me thought, I can't go and do jokes about Maccas. Like, I'm not going to be a tradie. Because, mm. like, the Australian scene, you know, if you go there, everyone was doing kind of the same thing, which I kind of, ironically, again, because of my maths, it was like I recognised that there was this formula, <laughs> that, not a formula, an algorithm, really, of people were following, you know. Mm. It's like whatever. So if it's an eth ethnicity thing, so, like, Italians are talking about being Italian and Greek and mm. Vietnamese and Muslim and whatever, and it's just like, guys, you know, it's... We can do better than this. Mm. Or it's like, it's, you know, you kind of, this has been done before. It was, and, a, it was kind of a crowded space and it was just over and over again, the same well, kind of tropes I, and all that. I, I, it was, sure, it's crowded, but I just think people didn't understand the fact that, or these people didn't understand that, you know, why go and copy someone else? Mm. You really, there's, there's just so many ideas out there that are yet to be discovered. You have mm. to, your job is to come up with something new and go and, explore, and, see what yeah, hasn't explore, been done yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so there was part of that in my mind, but also I, I, I you know, was looking down the, you know, the paths of comedy, but then it was like, I realised, well, if you tell a joke, people will listen. And jokes are complicated things, mm. and they're abstract, they really are abstract. Because mm. if you think about it, I'm making you laugh with noises, like noises coming out of my mouth. If I did it in a language you don't understand, whatever, whatever that might be, like you just might, you know, you might think, oh, that sounds funny, but mm. you, don't understand, you don't have the meaning attached to it. Mm. So it's this really bizarre thing. It's very abstract. Actually, you have to be quite clever to comprehend and appreciate yeah. a joke. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the joke maker is doing this dance and making this thing. Because the whole mm. thing about a joke working is that there's a, there's a, a, a realisation. Mm. So there's something that triggers in your head that creates enjoyment. And guess what? That's what happens when you solve them. Mm. So it's the for same me, it's the same of, enjoyment. Yeah. That click, which most people do not usually connect. Well, no, people have, don't have any idea. Yeah. And I mean, you know, like in my show, I talk about Pythagoras' theorem because you know I've met engineers that don't even know how to prove Pythagoras. Mm. I mean, not instantly. I mean, sure, they could sit down and work it out. Mm. But um, for me, that was just incredibly important. Like, why do these things work? Why are there these patterns? What do these patterns mean? You know, it's a, I'm a as for that, I'm a mathematician, I'm interested.